What determines the patterns of the markings on an animal? The search for the answer has led scientists to some mysterious waves made by cells. That's right. Today's key phrase is cells making waves. But let's not jump in too deep right away. Let's take it step by step. Okay. All right, Rena. Do you have any pets? No, but I love cats. Oh. I especially like calicos and striped cats. Okay, good. Stripes, that's perfect. One of my research passions is Japanese giant flying squirrels. Have you ever seen one? No, what are they like? Actually, they're really colorful and cute with pink noses, white bellies, and stripes on their face. Mm. Speaking of stripes, for a long time, scientists thought that the genetic code determined exactly where each stripe or spot would be on an animal. But now that research has taken a dramatic turn. There's not a predetermined master blueprint after all. The markings are created by a totally different mechanism. Let's take a look at the cutting edge research on this issue. Life has evolved a myriad of appearances. Many animals have intricate and beautiful coloration patterns. Under magnification, patterns of coloration on animals are revealed as collections of differently colored cells. In other words, a mosaic composed of pigmented cells. For a long time, scientists believed that the appearance of an animal, down to the details of its markings, had a blueprint, and pigmented cells followed the blueprint to form the pattern. But the research of Osaka University's Shigeru Kondo has overthrown that notion and generated global attention. Professor Kondo says that some animals have patterns that don't make sense as being entirely produced from a blueprint. One reason to doubt that there is a blueprint is individual variation in pattern. Among zebras, for example, they may all look similar, but zooming in on a specific area, each one's pattern proves different. The reason, surmised Kondo, is that the cells have no master blueprint. They generate the pattern on the spot. In the natural world, ordered patterns often emerge with no blueprint. For example, wind ripples. By simply blowing over a desert, the wind arranges small grains of sand into large-scale patterns. Kondo wondered if large patterns could be created at the cell level without an overall blueprint, like wind ripples, simply through independent behavior. He figured that the quickest way to find out would be to observe an animal whose pattern changes. So Kondo turned to the emperor angelfish. At the time, he was doing immunology research unrelated to the pattern question. He used his bonus to set up an aquarium in his home. Then he began videotaping. Look closely and you can see a spot where one stripe of the emperor angelfish is branching into two stripes. Kondo focused on this spot. I thought something interesting might happen there and that if it did, everyone would be surprised. Kondo made a prediction that the stripe would split into two like a zip fastener opening to keep an even distance between stripes. The 51st day of observation, the point where the stripe splits has shifted slightly to the right. The 161st day of observation, the stripe has become two completely separate stripes. Over a period of five months, his observations confirmed his prediction. Now, that's strange. Mm. You would think that the pattern just gets larger as the animal gets larger. 
but instead that stripes undip like a fastener to keep an equal spacing. Yes, Professor Condal's research suggests the possibility that animal markings are not all predetermined by DNA. DNA has an incredible amount of information encoded within it. It's often called the blueprint of an organism. But these findings indicate that the genetic blueprint doesn't determine everything. What causes these mysterious changes in appearance? Cells making waves. What does that mean? What causes this mysterious change? Kondo hypothesized that the evenly spaced pattern, like wind ripples in the sand, could be created by the following mechanism. First, suppose the cells produce two chemicals. One is an activator. It increases pigmentation activity in cells. This chemical causes cells to produce more of itself. So the cells make and release more and more of the activator. The activator also causes cells to make a different chemical. This is an inhibitor. It inhibits the production of the activator. As the inhibitor increases in concentration, the activator decreases. And when the activator decreases, the inhibitor also stops being produced and breaks down naturally. Under a certain condition, the concentrations of the activator and the inhibitor reach a balance. What's important is the difference between the activator's rate of propagation to surrounding cells and that of the inhibitor. It's important that the inhibitor propagates faster. What happens when the inhibitor diffuses into surrounding tissue faster? First, stimulated by the activator released by a cell, nearby cells also begin producing the chemical. Then the inhibitor is released and diffuses rapidly through the vicinity. Distant cells are reached by the inhibitor first, preventing the concentration of the activator from rising there. This produces a peak-shaped distribution in which the two are in balance. Only the cells where the activator is present produce pigment and take on coloration. A pattern of evenly spaced stripes results from the same mechanism generating pigmented cells in adjoining areas. The relative quantities of the activator and inhibitor generate a waveform. Kondo believed that these waves are the mechanism used by cells to generate coloration patterns on their own. Here is his explanation of how the number of stripes increases on emperor angelfish. As its body grows and becomes larger, the distance between the yellow stripes widens. That creates a blank space where the inhibitor is absent. The even spacing between stripes is maintained when the activator diffuses into the blank space to create a new waveform peak increasing the number of stripes. Kondo was convinced that this was the mechanism behind stripe patterns. His insight came after he read a scientific paper. It was published in 1952 by the British mathematical genius Alan Turing. Turing laid the foundations for computational sciences and has been called the father of the computer. In the paper, he proposes that under certain conditions, two chemical substances reacting together as they diffuse will produce wave-like patterns in the chemical's concentrations that lead to the shapes and patterns of organisms. What kinds of waves result from different reaction rates and diffusion speeds? Turing devised equations that provide the answer. 
Kondo used Turing's equations to write software that would simulate the patterns. When he entered the Emperor Angelfish data, the simulation showed a stripe splitting like a zip fastener being opened, just as had occurred in the real fish. I thought the pattern would change that way, and all of the changes I predicted came out in the software. I was convinced I was right. Kondo's discovery was featured on the cover of the scientific journal Nature. After half a century, the theory of mathematician Alan Turing had been demonstrated, stunning scientists around the world. Now we have a better understanding of what cells making waves really mean. Mm. And how about that Japanese researcher? He gave proof of a prediction made 60 years earlier by a British math genius. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. That Alan Turing's formulas showed how cells create pattern markings on animals. Okay, here's a little quiz based on Professor Kondo's simulation. Mm -hmm. We just featured him in our last segment. We have two fish. On the left, a white spotted char, and on the right, a masa salmon. The one on the left has white spots. The one on the right has black spots. If you were to cross-breed these two fish, what pattern would you get? Okay, mm. think about it. One with white and mm -hmm. black spots mixed together? Okay, well, let's find out if you're right. Okay. This graph shows what pattern results as you gradually alter the reaction rate between the activator and the inhibitor factors. On the bottom left, you have a white spotted pattern. On the bottom right, a black spotted pattern. These look just like the salmon and the char patterns, right? Right. Halfway between them, you see the striped pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, if you cross these two fish, the offspring really have a striped pattern, just as the graph predicts. Not spotted? No. Nope. So real life follows the simulation. It seems strange that a pattern like this could be randomly generated, though. It does, doesn't it? It means there are random patterns in nature, not just patterns useful for survival or reproduction. Indeed. But why did Professor Kondo choose Impera angelfish <laughs> specifically? There are plenty of fish in the sea, as they say. There are plenty of fish in the <laughs> sea. <laughs> That's a good question. Actually, he thought using emperor angelfish would help his paper get on the cover of a scientific journal because they're such a beautiful fish. Mm. And we have to give credit to the lady at the tropical fish store. She told him that their patterns would change, and he banked on her being right. Really? Those are some interesting reasons. They are. Waves made by cells do not only create patterns in animal markings. They're also deeply involved in shaping our organs. Let's look into that research now. Waves generated by cells do more than create patterns. It's now understood that they give our bodies shape too. For example, the complex structure of the lungs. The lungs begin as a small chamber that separates from the esophagus. This chamber undergoes a series of bifurcations as it grows. The final result is a complex structure with many branches. This allows for efficient exchange of gases. But how does this structure form? The mechanism was long unknown. Associate Professor Takashi Miura of Kyoto University set out to find the answer. Having learned of Kondo's evidence to support Turing's theory, Miura surmised that the complex structure of the lungs could also be created by the interaction of an activator and an inhibitor. 
First, Miuda removed a section of lung from a developed mouse and probed the effects of activators. In a Petri dish, she placed lung epithelial tissue with an activator. The epithelial tissue reaches out towards the activator. This confirmed that the activator promotes cell division. Let's look at a cross-section of the growing lung tissue. The epithelial tissue is growing through cell division. It is surrounded by mesenchymal tissue. The activator whose activity Miura demonstrated is a protein called FGF that is produced by mesenchymal tissue. Meanwhile, the epithelial tissue releases an inhibitor called SHH that inhibits FGF synthesis. In a simulation with parameters including the concentrations and reaction rate of the two chemicals, the lungs bifurcated as they grew, just as Miura had predicted. Just by having individual cells follow rules that are extremely simple, it is possible to create a branched structure that is extremely complex. Here is how Miura explains the simple rules that lead to branched structure. First, wherever there is a slight protrusion, the cells there are exposed to a slightly higher concentration of the activator, so they divide more actively. Second, the inhibitor released by the epithelial cells becomes concentrated on either flank of the projection, inhibiting cell division there. For these two reasons, cells in the protrusion will divide more readily and it will grow outward. Once new protrusions form at the tip of the growth, they will once again encounter more of the activator. The iteration of this phenomenon allows the complex structure of the lungs to be formed. So the complex branching of the lungs is formed by cells, essentially, doing their own thing? Yes. The basic shape of the lungs, for example, the initial bifurcation of the bronchial tube, is very precisely determined by some kind of blueprint but the blueprint doesn't specify the placement of cells in every little branch. Mira believes that is determined by spontaneous interactions between cells, like Turing's formula in action. If specific instructions had to be issued for each cell, there could be a lot of mistakes. Right. It's more logical to control just the initial parameters, then let the cells do the rest on their own. Exactly. And it actually seems like a design that makes an organism more robust.